siblings of narcissists, psychopaths, or sociopaths. What's your experience? Story 1. My dad is as much of a narcissist as it gets. I didn't realize that it was abnormal until I moved out of the house and out of state. When I finally came back, I remembered him calling me one day to tell me to give him $10 because he claimed he needed to grab something to eat. Sorry, but I don't have $10 to give you. You don't have $10 to give your dad? Come on, I'll pay you right back. I just need it to go down to the store so I can eat. I don't have it, so you'll have to put on your big boy pants and make some money for yourself. Well, I was going to ask your sister, but I don't want to ask her because she's my daughter, you know? I hung up after that. A few minutes later, he calls me and says, Hey, your sister just sent me the $10. See, it wasn't that hard. A couple months later, I heard that he was still asking my sister for money, and then, on my sister and my brother-in-law's anniversary, he called and basically blew her up over the phone when she said no to the point where she was crying. On that day of all days. And then he finally said, so you're just going to let your dad freeze to death outside tonight? My brother-in-law told him not to ever call them again, and I haven't heard from him since. He honestly thinks he's super popular and a good person, but he isn't. I blocked his number and want nothing to do with him anymore. Back to the question, though. It's really weird because you end up growing to either be just like them or completely the opposite. I've had to grow up on my own and not be able to have a father figure to show me how to be a man and make smart decisions or how to be a leader of a household. These are things that I think many people take for granted and don't fully realize how great they have it by having it both by having both parents in the house and have them not be completely focused on themselves. I always envy the people that still get to live with their parents into their 20s. I moved out when I was 18 and I'm almost 30 now, and I wish every day that I had the ability to still live at home and not have to worry about rent, utilities, car payments, insurance, gas, phone, internet, etc. You're right about the growing up like or opposite. I'm getting worried because both my parents are freaking sick, and while I'm cutting contact once I'm out, my brother is beginning to act like my mom. It's sad to watch. Part of it is me being proud that this person decided to move out on their own and decided to learn how to be independent or figured that out on his own. I wonder what he did while he was living under their roof. It sounds like if he had gotten a job or something, his dad would have demanded that he give him all the money. I don't know if that's true or not, but Sometimes things just make more sense once you get out of the house and you start to see things through your own eyes. Story 2 My sociopathic older, three and a half years, and I shared a bedroom growing up. I slept on my stomach with my head under the pillow and my stuffed animals on both sides because she would beat me in my sleep. She would lock me in our old dilapidated spider-infested shed instead of babysitting me. She would invite me to hang with her and her friends. All I wanted was to be included in our room. Everyone would be really nice to me for like five minutes before my sister would snap and beat the living hell out of me while her friends laughed. They bully me all day, every day. I was sweeping the kitchen one afternoon, and she walked in, snatched the broom out of my hands, and proceeded to beat me with it. Telephone receivers, tennis rackets, soccer cleats, and hairbrushes were her weapon of choice. Once, when I was 18, I still lived at home, and she lived a couple miles away. I just got off work, and she showed up at my parents and invited me to hang out at her place and told me to bring my weed. Knowing she was just using me, I told her I was tired and didn't want to go anywhere. She left and about an hour later I left to get a pack of smokes. As I'm driving down my parents' street away from their house, I see my sister barreling down the street towards me. Needless to say, she plowed right into me, totaled my car. 
Currently, my mother, my brother, his partner, his ex-wife and her husband, and my 18-year-old niece all have restraining orders against my now 44-year-old sister. She's been banned from grocery stores and other public places for her explosive, I'm just being honest, tirades on other customers. She was arrested for assaulting one of the aforementioned family members, and as the cops were putting the cuffs on her, she said, I should have curb stomped the shrew. Side note, my dad bails her out of every legal situation she's ever been in, so she has never been held accountable for her behavior. She literally believes laws exist for other people and not her. She is a narcissistic sociopath according to all the mental health providers I have seen over the last 25 years. That is scary. This person seems like they need mental health, the older one. But the person telling the story is the one that has seen mental health providers. Just no accountability whatsoever? You gotta wonder what's going through the dad's mind when he's bailing out this person. Does no one have any... Does the dad have a restraining order against, against her? It doesn't look like it in the story. I guess she's just the lifeline, and if he passes away, I'd think there's nothing protecting her. Story 4. Two-Year Divorce Slash Custody Battle I was a faithful, happy, and devoted husband and father. Gave up my music and my small business to stay home with our child by her request. She displayed great emotional and mental abuse and instability prior to our child's birth, was prescribed meds, which helped greatly, but went off when our child was conceived and never went back on. My goal was to protect him as much as possible. She got worse and worse again. She started a relationship and affair with another co-worker, someone she hired, and hatched a plan to destroy me. Had me arrested, kicked out, left me with no money, job, vehicle, home, and told the court I was an abuser, neglectful of our child, an alcoholic, stolen, wasted family funds, etc., etc., etc. Without the court's involvement, she had his education and medical block me. I have access now. Son developed bad asthma, and she hid it. He was prescribed two inhalers and only gave me one. When I tried to get in touch with his education and medical, she claims I'm harassing them and causing problems. I went through four months supervised visitation for one hour a week, two child protective services investigations, no case was ever opened. I have my sons overnight on a more regular schedule now. She still won't settle and still wants sole custody. She took out a $120,000 loan out on our apartment a year ago without my approval or court's knowledge, and they put it in equity. I brought in a forensic psych who tested us and said that my test showed I was too well-adjusted, and therefore I must be in denial, and hers said she's prone to persecutory behavior and ideas and hysterionics. I've done nothing but complied with everything, given her every knowledge branch, and all she does is take and accuse. She told the forensic we had a nanny, no proof, and no we didn't, and that I pled guilty to the charges. I didn't, and they were dropped by the court. She told the doctor our child's preschool couldn't hold or administer his medication, but I have a recording of them saying they could and do. Narcissistic Personality Disorder Story 5 Sister is a narcissist. Used to threaten me and say generally mean things when we were little. That progressed to her telling lies to get me punished as we got older, and then just being manipulative and trying to use anything to get people to feel sorry for her. My younger sisters used to get called fat and told that everybody in the family was embarrassed by them. They were 8 and 13 years younger than this sister, so she was picking on a 10 and 5-year-old when she left for college. Her parents have enabled her in doing this for years by telling us other kids that we just had to learn to ignore her comments and rarely ever reprimanded her for being a shrew. She's almost 50 years old now and still acts the same way, but we don't have to deal with her when we don't want to because she still tries to divide the family and she has the best luck with me since she's the oldest and more favored. I recall the time I loaned her something and she came to me and claimed someone else broke it. I knew how this would go. She would claim that since she didn't break it, she wasn't responsible 
and her mother would agree and dad would follow mom, and I'd be cheated out of my present that I'd just gotten a couple weeks ago before, so I told the superintendent at school since it was supposedly broken at school. We got home, and she whined and complained to the parents, and when she was done, dad came into my room and ripped my butt with, you don't go dragging our personal lives out in public, and we'll handle this stuff at home, and never took the two seconds to ask my side of the story, which just enforced my belief of how it was going to go. My mom then came in and told me that social life was different in high school, and I was in the wrong. Curse them. Curse them indeed. You deserve better. Family isn't anything sometimes. Story 6. They can make drama out of any situation and will try to drag you into it even years later. Example. I am the next to youngest. My whole family is a trash show, but when I was planning my wedding, I was still trying to pretend I had a reasonable family. My future husband's family was like leave it to beaver, so I asked both of my sisters to be bridesmaids. I knew this was a risk, but I hoped they could keep their mess together for a single evening. At the time, I thought they had. About eight years later, we were in the same city because one of our brothers was in the hospital due to a bad car accident. We had one hotel room across the street from the hospital so people could go rest when they needed to. I was in that room with my oldest sister when she said, You know, middle sister stole wine glasses from your wedding, right? I told her I didn't care. A couple hours later, I was in that room with my middle sister. She said, You know, older sister stole glasses from your wedding, right? I also told her I didn't care. So here we are, waiting to see if our brother was going to perish, and both of these shrews are playing reindeer games with me, trying to make me be angry with the other one. Our brother lived. I've cut contact with all my siblings because they're all like this. They have to start stuff no matter what the situation or consequences. Do you know I actually had to look up what the meaning of reindeer games is? It never occurred to me to make the connection with the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer song. I didn't think it had anything to do with the fact that they were games that were meant to repel outsiders or to bully others. I thought it was something deeper than that, but I was wrong, so it makes sense in the context of this story. One of those little blanks of information that I just got filled in. Story 7. When we were younger, we had no heat, and he would come into my room and take my covers. I was too small to fight back, so I'd just lay there and freeze all night. He threatened me that he'd hurt me if I told our mom. As we got older, he became a substance addict. He would steal my mom's pain medication and anxiety medication so he could get high. If my mom had any money, he'd steal it from her. He used to steal her car, but she wouldn't do anything because she didn't want him in jail. After my mom passed away, he broke into our house and stole several of our things. The cops said they could do nothing about it. He got all his kids taken away because he and his baby mama were doing Walter White crystals while she was breastfeeding and their baby almost expired. He still says that his kids shouldn't have been taken away. He seriously doesn't understand. He actually said to my dad, She just smoked a little bit. I don't know what the big deal is. They're about to have another baby. I hate him and want nothing to do with him. We're half-siblings. Our older brother, who was his full sibling, perished earlier this year, and I constantly wonder why it was him and not my awful brother. I don't even consider him family anymore. Story 8. My sister has never been diagnosed with narcissism or a personality disorder other than OCD. But when we were younger, she often enjoyed telling people before I met them that I had a difficult relationship with the truth so that they wouldn't want to be around me. I had the reputation of a liar and no friends for most of my preteen years. And she was popular in our homeschool group until she left and got into high school. After she left, I still didn't have friends, but neither did she, and she blamed me for it during her frequent temper tantrums. She would throw things, scream, cry, and threaten me with kitchen knives on a pretty regular basis. All of a sudden, the year that I turned 17 and she turned 21, the tantrums stopped and she got engaged. He moved in with us, the tantrums started again, and for once, I wasn't the target. The worst fight they had happened when she caught him looking at a photo of a bikini model, 
which she considered cheating. She hit him full force with an open palm, and when our mum saw, she threatened to kick her out if she hit him again. They got married, moved out, and divorced within a year of him enlisting in the army. He had to get away, somewhere with less violence. Story 9. Growing up, she had total control of my life. She criticized what I wore, listened to, ate, everything. If I was different, I was weird. If I liked what she liked, then I was copying her. She tried to scare me multiple times with guns and knives, claiming she would never actually hurt me, but she would hold up a samurai sword to my throat and tell me if I moved, I died. Eventually, she had a kid when she was 19 and I was 16, and for a year she was a good mother, and then decided she didn't want to be a mom anymore. I've seen her ruin countless people's lives, spanning from just stringing them along to draining their bank accounts to contributing to them being put in jail for domestic abuse. She's still waiting for trial on her charge. I despise her, and she's not family to me. I had so many issues growing up that only stem from things she did to me, and I don't want to see my niece grow up like that. My parents are doing a wonderful job of raising her, but she doesn't understand why mommy isn't there, and it breaks my heart. It's better for the child to not have contact with her. Better an absent mom than a sociopath treating you like an object. I agree with that last sentence. I just could not imagine what would happen if the mom still was raising this kid, especially after it was said that she decided she didn't want to be a mom anymore. It sounds like the kid would just end up being another object for her to abuse, which would be completely sad. I'm really glad she's with her grandparents. Story 10. Brother was doted on as a child because he was gifted at basketball literally had no consequences growing up and could do whatever he wanted, treated me and our parents like absolute trash, and they still doted on him, while I would get the belt for the most benign and asinine stuff. My brother's life is absolute dirt right now. He has no sense of self-worth and just gets handouts from my parents. He's in his late 30s and my parents are giving him money for rent and food. He wants everyone to feel sorry for him and expects everything to be handed to him. He can't do anything on his own and guilt trips and manipulates my parents into doing whatever it is he needs doing for him, or just giving him extra funds. He has no incentive to change and is content playing video games all day while my parents just enable his lifestyle. At holidays, he just talks down to me and tries to make me feel bad about how difficult his life is. I could care less about him and have no desire to talk to him until he makes some serious changes in his lifestyle and life choices. The best revenge is living well. Story 11. My sister has dialed down her act a bit after we have all spent a few years out of our raging NPD butthole father's house. I mostly remember a massive sense of entitlement that simply made no logical sense and would require a great deal of cognitive dissonance to explain. Like, she would never loan me things, CDs, etc., but had no problem walking straight into my room in front of my face to take a bottle of body lotion to use on herself. She seems to have no remorse for what her behavior did to others, so long as she got what she wanted out of the deal. Sometimes she would just do and say mean and spiteful things for no reason. I talk to her from time to time. While she's less of a self-involved sociopath, she is still insufferably self-righteous. Ugh, my sister was like that. I was never allowed to borrow her clothes, even when I asked, but she would go to my closet and take whatever she wanted. I ended up having a specific hanger for every shirt I owned. I could look at my closet and know what was missing by the empty hanger. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 12 my narcissistic brother is almost 10 years older than I, so I don't remember a lot of the things he did. I know the stories, though. He left home at 16. We did have a relationship as adults, but I cut it off realizing that he hadn't changed. He's stolen from my family members, is a pathological liar and a con man, to say the least. We call him Con Man Don. He's even lied to his children about having cancer. He is a piece of work. He has never acknowledged anything he's done. In fact, he acts like none of it ever happened. And now, we don't talk. I'm close to his children. I get joy out of family events my brother actually attends, 
because I make him super uncomfortable. I also have an older sister who has gaslighted me my entire life. I didn't realize it till adulthood when people would point out her behavior to me and question it. She's narcissistic in many ways too, never sees the error of her own ways. I can be around her, but I have to keep it limited. I finally learned to have boundaries. He left home at 16. Sounds like his parents were fed up with him too. That's got to be really hard and heartbreaking to deal with. You still love this person that you helped create, but you just can't put up with their behavior anymore, and something has to give. It's good that everybody has limited contact with this person. Well, except for the kids. It's going to be hard to see what they're going to be like when they grow up. Story 13. He never got a diagnosis, but he's good at deceiving. He always just tried to get all the attention, cried to get me punished so he could spend more time playing with my PlayStation I saved my money for myself. I ended up being the black sheep, my mom constantly threatening to call Child Protective Services. If I wouldn't have been so unknowing, I would have preferred that. He was always sick, and he was always the victim, so much that they ended up forgetting me at home when they went to my grandparents and didn't realize it until they heard me crying alone at night behind a couch. There's a lot of messed up stuff I'm not including, but it wasn't just emotional terror. He willfully abused the whole relationship to my family, so we started to estrange one another. I confronted him a lot, so years later he's on a different route and tries to be himself, rather than a victim. I still don't want to be around anyone here. It burns on my skin to even get near. But it's not as bad as being in the situation and having to deal with it. Story 14. I was playing with a suitcase while watching TV. I was small enough to fit myself in it. My brother, nearly four and a half years older than me, saw what I was doing and asked to zip me up in it. After already having learned to never trust him, I asked mom to watch us to make sure he didn't do anything stupid. He zipped me up inside the suitcase and started carrying it in a shuffle step. Thump, thump, thump. I heard the sliding door to the enclosed patio open. Mom started screaming and I could hear her slapping my brother repeatedly. The suitcase fell over onto its side with me still in it. I managed to pry open the zippers from the inside and got myself out of the suitcase as quickly as possible. Mom was still slapping at my brother screaming, Why? I was two feet away from being dumped inside a suitcase into the family hot tub. He laughed and said that I would have floated. What's the big deal? So yeah, that's what it's like growing up with a sociopath. Story 15. It's interesting, really. My mom passed away recently. When I called my sister to come down the day before she passed, she said, I thought she was going to pass today. I'm not disappointed, but I can't keep missing work. The next day I called her to come to the hospital again as the doctor and I made the decision to take her off the ventilator. On the phone, she said, Well, can we pull out the tube as soon as I get there because I have plans tonight. She also proceeded to ask me for rent money that day, as I also live with her. The things they say and don't realize how messed up it is is really baffling. Dang, I feel bad every day about not being there for the moment my dad passed. I remember telling my mom I can't watch it on the phone and feeling like such a piece of trash. But hearing about people like this make me realize I had a more normal reaction than that at least. Story 16. I don't know if this counts, but my six-year-old brother, he was six when this happened, once asked my mom if he could have some of her fries. She said yes and asked why. He replied with, so I can unalive seagulls. She asked why and he replied with, so I can bait them and then unalive them with rocks. My mom asked why he would do that, and he answered, Because I don't play enough Fortnite. Another time, my friend accidentally stepped on my dog's paw and was like, Oh, deity, I'm so sorry, and etc. Then, my brother from the other room yelled, I wish I could break the dog's paw. He's done other things, like talk about how he wouldn't miss me if I perished and such. I've also had dreams about him unaliving everyone I know, like family, pets, and friends. How long ago was the first incident? Story 17. I'm not even totally sure of my older brother's diagnosis, 
but several years ago, I found out through his journal that he had an elaborate plan to unalive me and had apparently attempted to before, but couldn't go through with it. His reasoning was mostly because I was mean to him as a child, but really, he was the one cruel to me. The part that really messes me up is that both my parents knew about his wish to unalive me and never said anything to me. Let us sleep under the same roof. They always coddled and treated him differently than me. He is severely mentally ill, likely a psychopath, has been in a mental hospital now for several years. I cut contact with my parents as soon as I moved out. Story 18. My sister is way into herself. She has no real friends, but she has like 60,000 Instagram followers. She literally just spends her money on new clothes and the newest iPhone to take selfies. And when I say she has no real friends, I really mean it. She never leaves the house, never had a job, dropped out of high school, but she thinks she's the greatest thing God graced this planet with. I don't really talk to her because anytime I try, she's just taking pictures of herself with different outfits. It's really annoying. I don't know why my parents condone or finance this lifestyle. She gets it from my mom. She's kind of the same way. If she hasn't monetized 60,000 followers, she's doing it all wrong. Story 19. Not a sibling, a cousin. When I was eight and my cousin was seven, I noticed my dog, Pug, missing one day. I only noticed after everything that she wasn't there that morning. I was going to ask my best friend to go play hide-and-seek with me. In my hiding spot, I could hear my dog whimpering, and as I looked for my dog, I found her with all of her teeth ripped out and scissors in her right eye. After minor surgery, she's fine, and not to say I'm happy about it, she looks hella cute even with a stitched eye. I don't know what happened to my cousin, but him and his parents were taken out of our lives forever. Story 20. When I was 10, my mom put a lock on my door because my brother started threatening to unalive me and my mom in the night. When I was 14, he fixated on my mom and threatened to burn down our house, shoot my whole family, and steal all the valuables and drive away. That same year, he was 17, he took our car and ran away from home for two weeks. We ended up calling the police on him. When he came home, the police decided that it would be best if he lived somewhere else. So he did. As we were cleaning out his room, we found hundreds of knives, a handgun, lighter fluid, gasoline, and lighters. He sounds lovely. Story 21 My daughter was hit by a drunk driver when she was 12 and nearly passed away. She was in a coma for two weeks, and I was there all day every day except to go home to shower and change. My sister decided that when I was at the hospital was the perfect time for her and her addicted girlfriend to jimmy the sliding door off the track, break in, and steal everything she could find. Jewelry, my camera, and yes, my daughter's piggy bank. The shrew stole the piggy bank from a comatose kid. I'm so sorry. I hope that your daughter is doing better now and that your terrible sister has left you all alone. Story 22. Lived an entire lifetime not being aware that it isn't normal to run to your bedroom and hide when dad gets home. That it isn't normal to be scared of your parents' reactions to, well, anything. Becoming a mom and having little kids that I just looked at and knew, I could never beat them up for picking a flower or shame them for not knowing how to hang a shelf or throw grubs at them if they come outside, or throw potato salad at them if they say they don't want any. Yeah, it wasn't normal, and only just now am I realizing all of that. Story 23. Every only child should read comments like these before deciding they got the short end of the stick in life by not having a sibling, a live-in childhood friend. It doesn't always work out that way. Hopefully, most sibling relationships are healthy and happy throughout life, but some of them are a lifetime commitment of frustration and misery about which you can do very little. I'm an only child with a narcissist mom. I was always thankful to be an only child because I didn't want anyone else to go through her junk. Joke's on her, though. I'm an adult and she gets to pass away alone. Story 24 She called the cops and child protective services, repeatedly accusing our stepdad of child abuse. It usually lined up with her having rules and punishments. 
She didn't like that my parents did research on how to raise a psychopath that doesn't become an unaliver. They suddenly knew all her tricks and tactics. I sometimes think about how sad it must be to be physically incapable of feeling human emotions, but it clearly would only hold her back. Forgiving is only something you can do after you feel ready for it. No one can force you to forgive. It's so entitled of others to try to do so. Story 25 Oh, deity, where do I begin? She fed my hamster to our cat because I wouldn't let her name it. She woke me up when I was sleeping in my mom's bed by punching me and then proceeded to break my index finger with the door when I fought back, just because she wanted to sleep there that night. She also poured bleach over my clothes because she was mad that I was doing laundry when she needed to. Honestly, there's a whole lot more, but those are some of the major stuff. Story 26. When she threw a cup of hot tea at my face because I refused to show her something on the computer. Or the time when she yelled at me for over an hour because I was really sick and had thrown up all over the bathroom sink. The same bathroom she had just cleaned. I stopped speaking with her over seven years ago. Story 27. You feel your life isn't your own. Everything will revolve around them constantly causing drama and trouble. Sister who would steal from you. Never-ending drama. Tried to steal my boyfriend repeatedly. Actually broke into one sister's house and robbed her. Can't tell the truth either. Disowned her about 10 years ago and her awful treatment of terminally ill mother. Peace since then. Story 28. I haven't spoken to my brother in three or four years. Last time I did, he went after my wife and that was the last straw for me. Since then, my parents have cut him off, he lost his job, and his life has spiraled. Not sure what he's up to now, but my quality of life has improved with him not in it. Story 29. Older brother. Highly narcissistic. Same with my mother. Verbally cruel and manipulative and always project blame onto others, never acknowledging their own behavior. I do not speak with either of them. My brother for over five years and my mother for over a year. Story 30. My dad is a sociopath. He raised me. It's very difficult having basic friendships, relationships, holding a job. The way I was raised is extremely unconventional, leading me to not react to normal situations as a typical person would. Story 31. I want to have nothing to do with him and his family. My parents can't cut ties with him, and it breaks my heart how he treats them. Hi, I think we might be the same person. Hoping it gets better for you somehow. Story 32. My sister, who is eight years older than me, chased six-year-old me around the house with a knife so I would leave her alone because she was babysitting while my parents were on a date and I needed food. Story 33. It's always difficult to share my problems with them because they also had that same problem at some stage of their life and it was much harder for them than it is for me, apparently. Story 34. Mom, narcissist. Dad, alcoholic. Possible narc, self-centered coward. Brother, golden child. Me, family scapegoat. Still working through the BS and healing at age 57. It can be done. Story 35. They're insane and always mad about something petty. Somehow everything is related to their projected social image, regardless of context or content. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.